Hello and welcome to Season 6, Episode 1 of Adventures in Fly Tying. And now here's your host, Joe Cornwall. Hi and welcome to another episode of Adventures in Fly Tying, Flyfish Ohio. I'm your host, Joe Cornwall. We're here today at the Cincinnati Fly Tying Expo, sponsored by the Buckeye United Fly Tires. We have some great patterns for you today. The first pattern that we're going to tie today is going to be the Madam X. Madam X, a really cool pattern. This is a pattern that was originally designed for a trout fly, and it was to imitate kind of a grasshopper. It's a very simple pattern, a, a bullet head pattern tied to deer hair. There's only two materials. The materials that we're going to use for this particular pattern today, deer body hair, we're not going to use this to spin. We're going to use this to make a bullet-shaped head and a tail, which adds a bit of flotation. And we're going to use some rubber legging material to add a little bit of motion. What I love about this pattern is it's just a spectacular fly, not only for trout during the summertime terrestrial season, but it's a great pattern to be using for panfish, smallmouth bass, rock bass on the creeks. The Madame X, it shimmies, it shakes, it looks great in a black dress or a purple dress or a natural dress. Let's go ahead and tie one. We're going to tie this particular pattern on a Mustad 3366 bass hook. So I'm going to put that in, go ahead and put that into my vise. This is a simple kind of a wet fly uh, style design, standard shank length, but you could use pretty much any ringed eye hook that you want. And I'm going to stress a ringed eye hook, a turned down eye really doesn't work very well with this kind of a fly because of the bullet head. Lay down a nice thread base all the way to the back of that shank, clip off your excess. Now the first thing that we want to do is tie in the tail. I've already clipped a little bit of deer hair here and put it into a stacker. So let's take that out. Let's measure that tail. We want that tail to be about as long, take out that extra thing there, it's about as long as that hook shank. So that's where my tie-in point is going to be. That means that I want to clip the rest of this material right up there. I'm going to tie it in a little bit behind the hook eye, and I'm going to start by tying it in with a relatively loose wrap. Now watch what I do. I bring this back in spiral wraps, not bringing it down real tight, because this is deer body hair. It'll compress and it'll flare madly, and I want to have a lot of flotation there. So I want to make sure I don't over-compress this, leave that tail. Bring your thread back up to that point where you tied it right in. All right, so now that's all we have is that tail and a little bit of body material. Now, once again, I've already clipped a little bit of material and put it into my stacker. In this case, we want to do something a little bit different. We want to take it out with the tips in your right hand. Now, when I fold this back, I want that to be right at about where that tail came in. So this is going to be my tie-in point right here at the eye of the hook. Once again, a couple of loose wraps just to lock that in. Now I'm going to get my scissors up inside and clip out the rest of that hair. Pulling that down, I'm going to tighten that down really good in the front. Same thing, spiral wrap back. So I have a neat underbody. And yes, this fly is very tough to keep it from rotating a little bit because you're not using a lot of pressure to tie this on. You can clip out those extra hairs if they get a little bit unruly. Now, bring this thread right to behind the eye, nice and tight right there. That's where you want this to really, almost like you're spinning deer hair, but with the tips facing forward, just the opposite of what you're doing with a bass bump. Bring the thread back to that midpoint. Now, so all I have to do is take my hands, Bring that back, make that bullet-shaped head, and tie on a little waist. Now look at how neat that came out. Isn't that cool? Now you could actually fish that fly right there, but it wouldn't be a Madam X. It would just be a simple bullet head deer hair fly. So how do we make this into a Madam X? Well, that's where the rubber legging material comes in, and that's what gives this so much motion in the water. In this case, I'm going to use a little pink that allows it to be seen. Let's remember that grasshoppers have pink legs, so this will work pretty well, too, in terms of coloration. I'm going to take a single piece of rubber legging material, fold that over, clip it. Now I have one for each side. I can go ahead and start on the near side, wrap that in, go to the far side, wrap that in. And I try to adjust those legs, so they're about the same length, but I'm going to trim those here as we get closer. Wrap five or six wraps of thread to hold that waist in place. Now, here's kind of a tricky part. You want to throw a whip finish over the legs. Much easier to do with your hands. If you don't know how to do a whip finish with your hands, give it a little bit of practice. It's really very easy. Tighten that down. There we go. Madam X. Let's make these legs about the same size. 
without pulling on them, without putting any tension, I'm simply going to hold them both out and clip. They're now the same length on that side. Hold them both out and clip. They're now the same length on that side. And look at what you have. You have a pattern that's kind of fun to tie, really fast, a little three minute tie. What a great panfish fly this is. It floats real well, throw a little floating on top of that. It's got a lot of inherent motion. You know, bluegills love rubber legs. Matamex, trout fly, panfish fly, smallmouth fly, creek fly, topwater par excellence, just a great pattern. Go ahead and tie one up, and thanks for joining us on Adventures in Fly Tying. Join us again on flyfishohio.com. We'll bring you some more great flies this year in dual high definition 1080p. Thanks for watching. Tight lines.